people, right? Yeah. Tough guy like him, you know? Um, so I believe, Ho Jose, did you have a story you wanted to mention? I do. Yes, please. First of all, good afternoon, everybody. I'm happy to see that all of you are here to celebrate the life of a very amazing man. Um, and I want to follow up with that. He almost, the Green Ranger almost killed me. I believe it. I yes. totally believe it. Johnny, so, Johnny can say that too. So can David. Yes. Yeah. So, what do you mean, Jose? Well, we were, uh, we decided that we were going to do a panel first thing in the morning. We are going to do um, uh, calisthenics, exercise, uh, martial arts at the Miami Airport Convention Center. Oh, right? I know that place. Yes. Bad move. Um, and for those of you who don't know, it's a convention center in Miami, obviously, the name. Um, but it's two floors. And the second floor is actually a floating city meeting that just, just supports every so often. So there's close to a hundred of us in this room, about half the size of this, and we're all doing jumping jacks. And all of a sudden, because we're all in unison, the floor starts going like this. Well, the manager of the convention center, Robert, great man, tall human guy, and comes running, what are you guys doing? Well, apparently, the chandeliers on the bottom floor oh, were going like this. <laughs> so um, he made all of us, he just, we had to stop exercise. We had to pick other exercises that did not require uh, unison, like push-ups, you know, it's, and um, he was not too thrilled. But the fact that we are at borderline, at Almost fell through that. falling yeah. through the uh, sprawling ceiling in Miami, <laughs> I would have imagined that headline, and and that's my story. Oh, and my wife has a story. She doesn't want to come out here, but I'll tell the story. Um, he did have a, a panel where he taught the audience, along with his daughter, um, how to do the wobble. Uh, really? Yes. Oh. Okay. I don't know the details. I wasn't there because I was working a different thing at the time. But she just mentioned it to me briefly. I thought I would share that with you guys. So apparently there's Man a, many talents, there's huh? a video, a parent's video out there of him teaching people how to do the wall it, with his daughter. Wow. H how were his dancing abilities? Do we... <laughs> it was oh. more funny than skill, but it was hilarious. He was just one of those that like, he'd always try to make you laugh. So yeah, he was uh, he was a great martial art artist. He, he was actually a decent dancer. He'd surprise you, but it would be more like you were shocked that he had the move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh. That doesn't surprise me. Thank you, Jose, for sharing that. Um, so this has been, like, I, I hope I hope that you know how much this means to all of us for, for you being here this weekend. Um, and thank you for sharing so many wonderful stories about, you know, your time with him and your memories. And is there anything else that you want to share with us? Um, I also like that your microphone is yellow. I didn't know if that was like nice or not. <laughs> color coordinated. They <laughs> probably did that on purpose. <laughs> no. Um, I don't know. I guess I guess we just have to. Um, yeah. I mean, I just always think like you've got to learn from this. We have to learn from it somehow, and um, we've got to learn to love ourselves, and we've got to learn to take you know depression and anxiety and those things that all of us have, like, you know, it's, Human. yeah, everyone has it. I, I, we were like, we had a whole discussion about it. Like, you know, the, 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 the thing about life, life is like, like what we say, life is life and like life will life you to death, <laughs> you know? And I think, you know, if nothing else, you, it's how you deal with situations. Like that's all life is, how you deal with the disappointments and deal with the, you know, the exciting things and just deal with the different changes. And I just think that, you know, if you need help, get it, you know, and, and there, there's nothing to be ashamed of. And, you know, like you said, we'd rather have you here. You know, I think if any of us, we could give anything, we would give anything to have him here. And I think he would too. He would give anything to, you know, rethink that moment. But, you know, just take care of yourself and, and take care of your friends and be sure to check in on each other, you know, and, and we'll just, 
Let's keep him alive. Let's let's celebrate him every single day. I want to see Green Ranger cosplayers. I want to see as many as possible. Um, green or white or other many other many colors. Yeah, yeah it's kind of green and white are the ones yeah. that everyone does. But yeah, um, yeah. Just take care of yourself. I think that's that's so beautiful, profound to say. <laughs> but but what you're what you said is so important, and um, I think that's that's kind of the takeaway. But once again, thank you so much. And like I said, this is kind of the first time that we're doing something like this. Pedro, did you want to take a photo of everybody? Is that something you feel comfortable yeah, doing? Yeah, let's do it. Let's see. And just funny. And I just remember our last, the last time I saw him, we were at Power Morphicon. And um, that show is crazy. Um, of course, it's like the, you know, probably the biggest Power Ranger Comic Con. And we were coming out of the green room, and it was, I think it was me and my husband. and. He was standing there talking to, like, you know, Jason always had, like, ten people around him. Like, he had an entourage, and he was, like, talking to them, and it was all so serious. And I went up behind him and hugged him around his waist and was like, hey, Jay. And he was like, he, the seriousness went away. And he was like, oh, my God, what are you doing? And hugged me back, and it was super brief. But I, like, me and Walter, we talked, obviously, the minute we heard the news. And we both were like, oh, my God, the, uh, Power Morphicon, that was the last time we saw him. We saw him, and we were hugging him. We were happy, and Walter actually found a video of them hugging, and he, and, he, and we just go, you know, just remember that life is short and life is very fragile, and so make sure your last moment with anyone is a hug or something happy. So yeah, for sure. And I know um, when you were speaking backstage, you were saying, you know, everyone this weekend, obviously, the Power Rangers family is so wonderful. Like we really are a family. And it's, I mean, I'm sure for you, been really helpful just to be around everybody. There is so much love in this room in the Power Rangers family. Um, can you, if you remember the first time that you met Jadia, do you have a specific memory from that? I do, I remember um, we were, it was the episode, I don't remember what the episode was called, but it's when we, we had the baby in the park and the baby was getting away. Like remember that we were chasing after this baby for like a week. In a, in a stroller. And I just remember we were there and it was me, uh, Johnny and Steve, and this was probably like our first day at, on set. And it was like five in the morning, six in the morning. It was like, the sun was barely coming up, you know? And it was Jason, um, Ki uh, Amy and, and David. And, but we met David the day before he came and met us at our, at our fitting our costume fitting, but they walked up and, and Jason was empty like, hey guys, how are you? Nice to meet you. And he was just always that guy who made everyone feel comfortable. Um, and then he got on your nerves and then he made you feel comfortable. <laughs> like I nicknamed him Sour Patch Kid because he was sour and then he'd be sweet. So he would do something horrible to you and then you'd want to punch him in the face and then he would say something funny and you couldn't punch him. So he knew how to work it. <laughs> but that was the first day. And, um, I just remember it was, you know, they, they were very welcoming to us because, I mean, obviously, we didn't know when we got cast for the, the parts that we were taking, you know, we were taking over the roles of yellow, black, and red. Um, we just knew that we were being added to the cast, so it wasn't until we had the job that they were like, oh, by the way, three really popular characters are gone, and you know, we're like, what? So, but no, but the three of them were very welcoming, and they, they knew, we all knew it was a tough situation. But we were like, let's make the most of it and let's just have fun. And we instantly all became really good friends. And yeah. And I think, once again, it kind of speaks volumes that he was initially only supposed to be on a couple episodes, and here he is appearing, what, almost every season? And it's yeah, it's funny because they, uh, yeah, they were, they actually had him pegged to, to play the leader of, um, what was the other show? Um, I can't think about it. VR Troopers? VR Troopers, yeah. He was supposed to be the leader of the VR Troopers cast. But they liked him so much, and they were like, you know, he needs to be on Power Rangers. And so, and again, like you said, he was only supposed to come on for a few episodes, and they instantly loved him, and they were like, no, he's going to. And then the rest is history. I mean, he is, he is probably the most recognizable Power Ranger in the world. And what was his demeanor like on set? Like, was he always, I mean, it seems like he was always fun. And he was a complete prankster. Like he always, like he was the one who was always being bad. Like, I just remember we had, um, like anytime there was anything like an ATV, a jet ski, or it, like, it was like, we knew we were gonna be delayed on set because Jason was gonna, like whatever they told him not to do, he was gonna do. 
And it was just always, yeah, he was always cracking jokes and being funny and showing you how to one inch punch. And he would like, him and Johnny would do flips all day long, like the same thing. It would be like, what is wrong with them? You know, but yeah, they were just total boys. <laughs> total boys. Yeah. Um, just out of curiosity, ha have many of you had the opportunity to have met him at a convention? Yeah. Um, does anyone, if you guys feel comfortable, want to share their experience, maybe meeting him at a convention, only if you feel comfortable. I know this is, you know, like we said, kind of the first time that we're doing something like this, but if you guys want to share a moment or a memory, totally fine. Okay. I had the opportunity to meet Jason and host panels for him throughout the years, but my favorite moment was you know, during the craziness of the world and we were doing virtual streams for GalaxyCon and we had Chris Sabat show up as, uh, who was it, Zordon's brother, Charles. And so we got the whole team. He's a right? one-man band. I love it. Did you make this yourself or? I came up with the idea and hired people to have it. Well, I was going to say, you got skills. I know. <laughs> Yeah, they've got some good cop like Yeah, we've gone I've gone overseas and those guys over there make really cool stuff. Like they're the power of the community is crazy. Yeah. Alright. So thank you, Karen, for coming. I know Jason might kick your ass, but still appreciate you being here. Um, yeah, this is called the Uniranger. Um, me and my kid make up like all our own fanfic. So this was one of them that we've been doing. Um, I got to meet Jason in really, really lucky circumstances. Um, when I was 30, I decided I didn't want to grow up and went to a cup, went to one of Jason's uh, Power Ranger boot camps. Oh, wow. So I got to train in his dojo, and then he invited us back to his house. And you know how Jason likes his fast cars and all that fancy stuff and the private gated community with the mansion, and Jenna comes down those stairs like she's a friend. And then, of course, you know, the little, little tiny dog. Um, so we got to hang out and have fun and nerd out, and I had so much fun I forgot to get a picture of him. Oh no! <laughs> so the whole time, because he, he trained you, like this dude was conditioning his legs by hitting the pillars of his dojo, and it sounded like a steel rod hitting it. And then he asks you to hold the bag for him. Oh yeah. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> Feel it through the bag. He There's set a bruise you up, right? through the bag. Yeah, he set you up. Oh yeah. Oh, um, so do the jump kick though, the spinning jump kick. That's amazing. Um. But you could tell right away too, like ADHD, like crazy. <laughs> the guys, like my son, yeah. kind of an inspiration. Uh, so I went back for a second one and got pictures and had all the fun there. Um, and then I uh, worked a couple of like the Wizard Worlds and things like that. So I got to meet him that way. But he meets, you know, millions of people. So there come a point where he would start forgetting who I was, but I would know his manager by name. Oh. So there's like that, that hint where you're like, I'm like. Oh yeah, don't worry about it, I've been in your house. <laughs> um, so, if this was actually supposed to be my son's first time meeting him, so that sucks a lot. I think I've mourned him more than any of my family members. I, I, he feels like I lost a friend. And I, I know we weren't like close friends or anything like that, I know he treated everyone like a friend that he met, but, uh, and then Amy's tribute just destroyed me. Um, but if there's anything I could say is that, like you said, check on your strong friends. You do not know what's going on in them. Um, if he had talked to any of the millions of people, I'm talking random nerds on the internet, we would have shown up and done whatever we needed to make sure he was still here today. Uh, and then that's kind of like the Power Rangers family. We'll argue for days on which Ranger's the best one and vicious arguments and why he should have been with Amy instead of Kath or blah, 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 <laughs> right? But I would rather have one of you weird randos contact me on the internet and still be here tomorrow. Because uh, I promise you I'll be weird. <laughs> I'm gonna hold you to that. <laughs> I like weird. I drive a rainbow duct tape car. Oh. <laughs> it gets better. Right? I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a junk artist, so I just I find the things that people toss out and make cool new things out of them. So, thank you so much. For thank you guys very story. much for being here. No, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And what a cool story and like going back. What, what was your name one more time? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Ryan. Ryan, Ryan Kinney. <laughs>
Find me on the webs and the stuffs. Cool. Uh, hey Man Productions, because there's 60 Ryan Kinneys in the US. Oh my, fair enough. Oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think the reason we're all here today is because we have that same experience. He made everybody feel like family, you know? It's just, he, he had that special way about him, and, and but I, Can you stop recording? I, I really believe that he loved me. You know? Hi everyone. Down to you. Ah, it's crazy, right? Ah, oh, I never in my life. Take your time. Jason would kick my ass if he knew I was up here crying. Like he would be like, "What are you doing?" Uh, never in my life did I think I would have to do something like this. You know. Um, but I'm so glad I'm here. I'm so glad I'm here with all of you. It's been a hard, like, week for all of us. Like, we just, you know, obviously, like, you guys, it's unbelievable, you know, that someone like Jason um, is not with us anymore. And I think what's more unbelievable is, like, it's a true testament where, you know how they say that saying, like, check on your strong friends? Like, who was the strongest friend out of everyone, you know? Who was the one who was standing on the chair at every con? And he was like, what time is it? You know, and he was so crazy at Comic Cons. And he would do anything to make you guys laugh and entertain you. And he's definitely like that you image where you think, you think he's got it all, you know? But, you know, obviously everyone knows we're all human. Everyone has, you know, deeper things that are going on in their life. But what I do know is that he would be like, he would not want us to sit in the room crying. He would not want that. He would want us to get it over with <laughs> and then remember him and have fun. And I think you guys know, you've probably seen him at a million Comic Cons. Most of you I recognize, so I know you've met him on several occasions. Yeah, no, but he knew, he, he knew I was a, um, I was a loud mouth and so was he, so it was inevitable. <laughs> um, is there anyone else that wants to share a story or experience? I, once again, I know this is a, an interesting, you know, time, and we're all here for you, you know? You have one. Okay. Oh, my husband. <laughs> so, uh, I uh, work for GalaxyCon, and I, I'm also part of the wrestling shows that we run for GalaxyCon, and a couple years back, I remember being at a show and our wrestling show was set up next to his booth and his line extended out of the hall. Um, and all weekend, me and one of my friends who grew up, like many of you, as Power Ranger fans, wanted that moment to get a picture with him all weekend, but our times just didn't sync up to where we could get that opportunity. Um, but there was a moment where JDF was on his way to do a photo op. He had to get in the Green Ranger costume for this photo op, and uh, he was in a rush. He didn't have time to stop back at his hotel. He was already 10 minutes behind because of his line being so long, and uh, he needed a place to change, and he saw the wrestling locker room, and he asked if he could change in there. And um, afterwards, he was gracious enough to take a picture with us in his Green Ranger costume. So I didn't just get a picture with JDF, I got a picture with the Green Ranger, which meant even more to me. But the fact that he was already behind 10 minutes and he didn't have time to run back to his hotel, but he took time to take that picture with me is a testament to the kind of man that JDF was. Um, like you've said, and like many of you have already said and feel, uh, the Power Rangers family is large, the convention family is large as well. It doesn't matter what your fandom is, what Power Ranger is your favorite. Our hearts all beat the same way. We all have the same feelings and emotions. And at the end of the day, you need to remember that no matter how you're feeling and how alone you feel, you're not truly alone because this is one big family. There is somebody out there that is going to understand what it is you're feeling, even if you don't feel like there is, there will be somebody. So just take the time to reach out to somebody if you're ever feeling any kind of darkness or hard emotion, just take that moment because it, you matter, everybody here matters, and 
We need you all here. Yeah, no, what he said. Yeah, what you said. Um, I think that's the biggest takeaway from all of this is that one thing that I will say that the blessing, like if there is a blessing out of tragedy, um, like we've all, like every ranger I could probably think of have talked, we've all talked this week. We were all in a group chat. We were all like messaging each other. People, we, you know, everybody has a life and everybody's doing a million cons and everybody's crazy. And when you're home, we got like, we respect each other and give that home time, you know. Um, but we all decided to just go and have breakfast together. And um, we promised, we all and were like, look me in the eye, promise me if, if you ever need anything, here's, you know, 20 people that you can call. And everybody promised each other that, like, if you need anything. Um, and so that's the, the blessing. I think I told them, I said, I've never had something so horrific happen in my life, but have, I got 30 brothers and sisters, or I don't know how many power, there's like over 100 of us now, but we're all going through it together. Like, I was literally hearing from people in New Zealand, I was hearing from people, like, People I hadn't, who'd worked on the show a million years ago were calling me and like, I'd never been bombarded with so much love and so much support and just like, hey, I love you. I just want you to know that this week, you know? Even promoters, before it came to the show, like two or three promoters like hit me up and they were like, I know this is your first show back, you know? I know what you're going there for. We just want you to know that we love you and we just want you to know that you know, just take care of yourself. And, and it's like, it's so weird, but you, you you know, we all get stuck in life and we don't have the time to tell each other that. And so I, you know, if there was any blessing out of this tragedy, I think I, I, I really know, we all really know how loved we are. So I hope that all of you know that. And I remember agreeing to do this and I was like, the minute I said yes, I was like, yeah, like I just said it. Cause I mean, I'm, you know, Broder, Sam, all of them who run the show, they're like family. Like we, I mean, I remember me and Jason did our first, like one of our first cons with this show. It was like an anime show in Florida. It was like our first show and could someone unearthed that picture? Like we're all like, and, yeah, it's on my, it's on my social media. Someone unearthed that picture. And I was like, what year was this? It was like, two, I think we decided it was 2007. Like that was our, one of our first cons. I think it was my second or first, whatever. It was crazy. Um, but that's when we first got started in this. And it was me, Steve, Jason, and Robert Axelrod. And like, I looked at that picture and just me and Steve were just like crying because we we're the only two, you know, they're gone and we're still here. And I was just like, oh my gosh. And but, but when he told me, you know, will you come? I was like, absolutely. But then I got like extremely panicked and was just like, I called my friend and was like, I don't know, I don't know if I, you know, I just didn't know how it feel this soon after to be around a lot of people, but I'm so glad. Everyone I've seen this morning has been so loving and so respectful and so thank you. I needed this. Thank you. I did, thank I needed it. Thank you. Um, if it's all right, I believe we have a video. Do we want to, so, um, this person, uh, when they knew that we were doing this memorial, uh, wanted to send in a video because they couldn't be here. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to see it, Karen, but yeah, I, we're going to we're going to play it. it. Um, should we mention who it is before we play? JDF. Um, he's a guy who was one of my childhood heroes, like most of us growing up. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. So I've got a five-year-old son and he's watching Power Rangers when he was three and a half-ish, almost four, and uh, it got to the episodes where, you know, Tommy comes into play, and uh, Rita's got the candle, and he's fighting all the Rangers, and I completely forgot about when he jumped into the Megazord and just dropped them all and kicked them out of it. Like, they had to grow while he was still small. Like, that's how, that's how incredible this man was. Um, but, yeah, like I said, I got the chance to meet him and I was lucky enough to be able to, to talk to him and uh, hang out with him and spend way more time with him than childhood me could have ever imagined. Um, so while it's, while it's really, really sad that he's gone, I'm, I'm glad that we got the chance to experience him, you know. Um, it's rough. It's rough, but uh, I feel like he's a guy who would 
tell everybody to think your heads up, hold them high, and uh, keep going forward, you know? So we're definitely gonna miss him. Um, sucks that he's gone, but uh, like I said, we got the chance to experience him and see his awesome work. So I know he loved his fans and being able to meet everybody at conventions and things like that. And I'm, I'm rambling now. I, there's a lot of stuff going on in here, but um, yeah, I'm gonna miss you, man.